Hey everyone, Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the new matte transitions that we add to the website. So if you go to ProductionCrate.com, toggle down Video, and let's find Motion Graphics, Transitions, here you can see 30 new matte transitions that we add to the website. Now 20 of these are exclusively for pro members, but 10 of them are entirely free for all users. So pro members, you can go ahead and download all 30 today if you would like. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump into Premiere and show you how I would use these. So here I am in Premiere. I just want to play some footage in my sequence. So I will use the slow motion leaves and let's also use these billowing clouds. Awesome, so this looks pretty cool. I like these two shots. Let's say now that I want to use a transition mat to transition from this first clip to this second clip. I already have all 30 of my mat transitions imported, so I'm just gonna find one that I really like. I like these hex droplets a lot, so I'm just going to import that. What I want to do is place the effect at the beginning and on top of the clip I want to transition to. Now one thing I'm noticing is this effect looks pushed into me. Uh, this is because my sequence is 1080p while all my transition mats are 4K. So what I actually want to do is select my transition mat, go up to my effects control panel, select motion, and let's just type in 50% to scale it down. This is really important in case you're working with 1080p in Premiere and you import 4K footage, it's gonna be pushed in without giving you any real good indicator that that's the case. One cool thing that you can do, however, since these are 4K is we can push in without losing quality. So I'll show you right now. I'll navigate to the first frame of this transition mat and I'll just keyframe the scale and then I'll navigate to the end of the clip and let's just scale it up 100%. So now not only do these hexagons animate, they also scale up and push towards the camera. So using this kind of scaling up technique, you can actually customize the transition mats however you see fit. You can use the same one multiple times and just change some variables here and there and make them look unique. Now the effect I want to use to actually get these track mats to work to reveal the footage is called a track matte key. So I'll just type track into my effects panel and let's drag this track matte key onto the clip I want to transition to that happens to be below my track matte footage. Now in my effects controls panel, let's find the track matte key. Right now matte is set to none. I actually want to set that to video two. Here you can see V2 for video two. So that works pretty well. If I play it out, you'll see that the track mat transition is actually revealing the footage underneath it, which is what we want. However, I do want to see the previous clip as well to give it that smooth transition look. So what I want to do is select both my second clip and my transition. Now let's just raise that up a layer. And then I can drag out that first clip at least to the extent of my transition clip. When I do that, however, I run into an issue where my transition mat is no longer revealing the footage. This is because my track mat key is actually functioning based off of the layer. So before we had layer V2, now it is actually V3. So I just wanna change the mat to video three. And now if I play it out, you'll see that it is again working, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty much how these track mat transitions work. Uh, you do have to continue stacking if you want them to transition from one to another, and that can get a little messy if you have 12 or 15 clips. So what I actually wanna do is condense both this track mat as well as the clip I am transitioning to by selecting both of them, right clicking and nesting. I'll call this clip two. If you're an After Effects user who doesn't use Premiere too much, nesting is just really similar to pre-composing. As you can see, it is working just like it was before. One really cool thing about nesting, if we go into our nested sequence, say I don't want this clouds billowing in the sky clip anymore and I wanna to transition to something else, I could find the clip I want to transition to. So let's say this grass clip 
and I can make sure I have both my cloud clip selected and the clip I want to swap it for and I can just alt click and drag onto my original footage and it'll swap it while maintaining the matte transition. So if I come back to my main sequence and play it out, you'll see that that worked out really nicely. One other cool thing you can do with these track mats, I'll go ahead and just copy this first track mat that I have in the nested sequence. And I just want to paste it over here and drag it on top. I can actually use the color that we see in these track mats and use maybe a cool overlay. So with that track mat selected, I want to find opacity and blend mode, and we can change this to something like maybe hue. So that looks pretty cool. Say I don't want blue, I can actually change the color to something else. So in my effects panel, I can just type in change and I can select change to color. I'll just change this blend mode from hue to normal for now. And now with my change to color effect, I want to change the from color to this blue and then the to color and let's just choose maybe like a nice orange color and I'll hit OK. And now back in my blending mode, I'm going to change it from normal to hue. And now you can see that we have this cool um, kind of summery looking color. If I go ahead and turn it off, you can see that's what it was before and that's what it is now. And if I play it out, Now these track mat clips are actually pretty short, so if I am using that blending mode, it does cut off. So what I want to do is just, let's zoom in here. I'll be on the last frame. I'll select my transition mat effect. I will right click it and I will just find the add frame hold. And that'll just give me this frozen frame. And now I can extend that out all the way to the end of my clip too. So I'll keep that orange color. Maybe let's change it to a blue just so you can really see the difference. So I'll select the change to color effect and let's just change this to maybe a darker blue. Something like that's cool. And I'll just copy this and I'll paste it to this. And delete my first change to color. And now let's play it out. So it's pretty straightforward. That's how these track mat transitions work. Uh, we do have 30 of them, so you can build out an entire sequence. All right, everyone, I hope you found that useful, and until next time.